Alright, alright, so vectors, vectors. So really to understand vectors, it's um, really a comparison to uh, scalars, which is the type of quantities you've been dealing with um, mostly through your math career here in calculus. And so what are scalars? Scalars are they're quantities that just have magnitude but that no direction associated with them. So what are some examples of scalar quantities? What are things that we measure that really don't have an associated direction, just like an amount, a magnitude? Yeah. Temperature. temperature is a good one, yeah. And so like, when you raise your hand and answer, tell me your name and then, and then answer. So I'll try to remember. Depth. My name's Kyle. Kyle. So depth. OK. Yep. So yep. Mass. Mass is a good one. Uh, Mass. Uh, my name is Chris. Uh, velocity. Velocity. OK. So actually, we're going to um, speed. We're going to be, this is going to be scalar. So velocity, we're going to hold on to that thought for a second. All right, so yeah, you got, you got temperature, mass, you guys got? How about time elapsed? Time elapsed is a quantity. It doesn't have an associated like direction in space, right? Volume is another good one. Area, volume, area. Okay, and so then uh, vectors. Vectors, also they have magnitude, they have amount, but then they, there's an associated direction, specific direction with a vector quantity. So what are some examples of vector quantities? Things that have amount and also direction, yeah? Distance. Tell me your name again. Kyle. Kyle. Distance, okay? So actually distance is a scalar, so, but there is a, a, a vector version of distance. Does anyone know what it's called? Displacement. Displacement, right? So if you, yeah, if you have distance and direction, that's displacement. Okay, other quantities that have direction associated. Velocity, Velocity okay. Force. Force. Yeah, force is a common one. Okay, momentum. Momentum has direction. All right, so we talked about this a little bit. So displacement is your change in position. So it has it has an amount, how far, and it has direction, right, from point A to point B. So just the how far part of it, just the magnitude, would be a scalar. And what's that? Someone said it before. That's distance, right? So. We're just defining terms here. Displacement is the vector version, and distance is irregardless of direction, and it's just how far. Make sense? All right, and then uh, vector velocity. Okay, so that has, that's how fast, but also in what direction, right? How fast and in what direction? And so then what, uh, what's the just the how fast? Or just the scalar, that's the speed, right? That's speed. Okay, questions on these. Okay, so why don't you uh, introduce yourself if you don't know everyone at your table? <laughs> okay, and so then at your table, I want you to discuss uh, the velocity of an airplane flying. Awesome, that's a vector. Okay, how about in the middle here? All right, how about the speed of a car driving northwest? Scalar. Good, scalar, right? Now, there is a there is a vector for that, right? If you have to have the direction northwest along with it, but this is referring to the speed. So that's that last one's a scalar. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. Any other scalars or vectors that you came up with that you're dying to share? Oh, okay. An example of vector would be air pressure. Air pressure. Is air is pressure a vector is or a scalar? Vector force? Pressure and force are different quantities. Actually, pressure is 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 not um, not direction oriented. So, but forces. So, like like water pressure, like when you're in the you know 30 feet down, there's water pressure. That's doesn't have direction. It's just how much pressure because it kind of pushes in all directions, right? But force, any anything with force would be a vector. Okay, other. Please. Number of cherries in a cherry pie. Scalar. <laughs> okay. Uh, any others? All right. Let's move on. Okay. So how we represent vectors? Representing vectors. Visually, we draw arrows. Right. So arrows. And what vectors have have uh, magnitude and direction? So. Uh, the direction of the arrow is uh, obviously 
uh, the direction of the vector, which way it points. And then the length that you draw is kind of proportional or corresponds to the magnitude of the vector. So if all these are proportional, then our, uh, the, what's, has, which one has the greatest magnitude, A, B, C, or D? B. B would have the greatest magnitude if these are all uh, in proportion. And the least magnitude? C, okay? Arrows, we call it the tail and the tip. So the direction of the vector is from the tail to the tip in that direction. Okay. And then symbolically, you use either a bold letter, like the, that bold B. You'll see that like uh, you know, in print, online, textbooks. Um, but it's kind of hard to write in bold, right? So if you're writing and you want to signify a vector, you're going to just you write like a cursive and then with an arrow on the top. And that signifies that you're talking about a vector quantity. As opposed to like if you didn't have that arrow there, that would be like a standard variable. And so you'd be talking about a scalar quantity. OK, questions on basics here. OK, so equal vectors, equal vectors. OK, vectors have a specific direction and a magnitude but they don't have a distinct location, okay? So if I come to this board right here and I push with 30 pounds of force against the board, then I walk over here and I push with 30 pounds of force against the board, different force or the same force? Same force just applied in a different place so that those would be equal vectors. Okay, and then if I went over that wall and I applied 30 pounds to that wall over there, same force, different force? Why different? Different, different direction, right? So I, if I apply 30 pounds on the green wall, that's a different vector, a different force than 30 pounds on the white board over here, because the directions are different. Okay, so thinking about displacement vectors here, we got five people. They all start at different places, but they they go the same distance, heading in the same direction, like a marching band or something like this. Okay. Different vectors, displacement vectors, or the same displacement vector? They all are the same magnitude. Those are all equal vectors, right? Those are all equal vectors. Because vectors are about direction and magnitude, not location. So these are all the same displacement vectors, and we could just say call them all D. So just call them all D. Instead of distinguishing D1, D2, D3, D4. So those are so equal. So so one thing I'll say is vectors are mobile. Vectors are mobile. Once you have a vector, you can put it somewhere else as long as the magnitude and direction are the same. It's the same vector. That's not a phone, is it? You're not on your phone, are you? You're writing. He's writing on some notebook. Sorry. Okay. Adding vectors. Okay. So adding vectors. So here's two vectors, A and B. I'm gonna add them together. So the, to do that, we're going to think about placing the arrows tip to tail. We just said you can, you can move a vector without changing it, right? So if I were to move vector A to the, from, so its tail is at the tip of B, then the sum that I'm representing is B plus A. So it's like, we got our grocery store example. So here's home. And I'm going to head to the grocery store. That's a displacement vector, right? And then from the grocery store, um, where am I going? From there? School, okay? So I'm going to go to the grocery store, and then I'm going to go to school. So, so the sum of those two displacement vectors is like the net result from beginning to end, right? So, <clears throat> what would, so doing those two journeys in succession means that we start where? Home and end up at? School. So the, the sum of those two would be the single vector that take you, takes you from the initial point all the way to the final point. Or the, another way to think of it is like adding vectors is as the crow flies, right? As the crow flies. So this is the vector B plus A. Kyle? Be like your total distance is that the total distance you went? So look at that. So if, if I walk this many steps here and this many steps, with the total, would that be that many steps? Yeah, that'd be less, right? So yeah, so here's the deal, right? The magnitude of B plus the magnitude of A is not the magnitude of B plus A. Do you see that? 
And why is that? Because you're messing with direction now. If you, if you go in the same direction, the magnitude of B and then the magnitude of A, then yes, the result is the total magnitude. Mess with the direction and then all that stuff, that, that's off the table. Right? Clearly, the magnitude of B plus A is less than the sum of those magnitudes. Yes, sir? Okay, we're just about to do that. So this, what I'm drawing here is what B first and then A. So B plus A. So then what about? So is this what you're saying? Yeah, so what if I took the tail of B and put it on the tip of A? So then what problem would that be representing? A plus B, right? A would come first and then B following. And so what do you notice about A plus B? Is it the same vector? Yeah, it's, it'll be the exact same vector, okay? So this is the idea that um, addition of vectors is commutative. You can change the order. You can go in any order and you're always gonna have the same result as the crow flies from start to finish. Same vector. Questions on adding vectors? Okay, subtracting vectors. Okay, this is a little more dicey. Okay, so the, the underlying idea here is to subtract vectors, we're gonna just add the opposite vector. So start with the vector and then add the opposite. We know that works with arithmetic too. So the example would be B minus A, which would be the same as B plus the opposite of A. So that's the opposite of A, right? Same magnitude in the opposite direction. So the opposite of a vector is what has the same magnitude and exactly points in the opposite direction. So now I'm gonna do B plus minus A. So I'm gonna put which tip on which tail? I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put which tip on which tail? Tell me your name right here in the green jacket. Brandon. Brandon. Uh, which tip I'm going to put on which tail to do B plus the opposite of A? Right, the tail of the opposite of A will go on the tip of B like that. And now I've got an addition problem, B plus that grayish vector. That'll be B plus the opposite of A or B minus A. Okay, that's awesome, you can do it, you should do it, you should understand it. But here's the deal, when, usually when we're looking at subtracting vectors, we look at it as, uh, we, we depict it starting with tail to tail. This is a common, common way that we represent um, subtracting vectors, is we don't do tip to tail, but we do tail to tail of the two vectors. So then the question would be, what direction is B minus A? So, so the, the, the difference will complete the triangle. The question is, which way? Here it is here. Which direction is sum of the B minus A? Right, so, so here's one way to determine the direction, what we just did. Do B plus the opposite of A, and then that'll tell you the direction. But that's kind of like redrawing it and doing a whole other problem. So is there another way that we could figure out that it goes up to the right and not down to the left? Okay, is there another way? So, does someone have a suggestion? Yeah. Um, it doesn't have to be, right? So, so you could have, so B could have been like this and A like this. So I could still do B minus A. So, it, so the relative magnitudes don't, don't really come into it. Okay, so uh, one thing to do is just like trial and error. So if I were to come along and say, just make a guess like this. I'm going to guess that it goes this way, having not done this, right? And so I'm saying, I'm saying, I think it's this, B minus A. So then what addition problem did I just make? What vector addition problem in that triangle with the, the way that those are oriented? What plus what would equal what in, in that? So where, where do you see tip to tail? Where do you see tip to tail? From this, this to the vector A, 
Here, right? Yeah. So there's our tip to tail. So what addition, what addition problem does this represent? It would be what? Starting with B plus B minus A, or what I think might be B minus A. And that would equal A. But we're, we're still, we're in conjecture mode, right? We're it's just like, yes or no? So then you look, do the math, right? So if, if I got the direction right, then this should work out. Does it work out? Does this equal A? I got B plus another B. What's that? 2B minus A. Does that equal A? No. So it's wrong. Okay. My conjecture was wrong. I got the wrong direction. Because if the direction were this way, then B plus B minus A would equal A. It doesn't. It doesn't equal. Therefore, it must be the other way. And so the other way is So now what addition problem with this? So this is B minus A. So what addition problem would that be? Where's the tip to tail? Yeah, A. So A would be first. So here's my tip to tail here. So now the way I've drawn it now, it would be A plus B minus A equals. Now, is that true? What happens over here? A plus B minus A. A minus A, B equals B. That B, right? And that's the same direction that we found before when we added the opposite, right? See, that's the same vector as the blue one. Okay, so yeah, you can do the add the opposite, that's fine. And then stick it into the triangle where you have them tail to tail, if that works. Or you can just kind of do this trial and error method where you create, you, you give it a shot and then check it with the addition. Does that make sense? Uh, one more way to think of it is when you subtraction, it's like when you subtract two quantities, what, what does that kind of mean? Like uh, subtracting, like if I, uh, went 30 feet, if I went 30 feet or my friend went 60 or 80 feet, what would the 80 minus 30 represent? Yeah, um, that example would be good. Anyway, what I'm getting at is uh, final, final minus initial. Final value of quantity minus initial value of quantity gives you like what, the amount of change. So if this is my, my final quantity, is it hot in here? No? It feels good to you? Okay. Uh, so final quantity is B. This is the kind of like my final, and my, my initial is A. Then what would B minus A, right? Final minus initial would be pointing in this direction. So your, your final is here minus your initial is here. So that's another way to figure out which direction you're going to put that in. So take your pick. Questions on subtraction. So we'll get some practice on the homework for that. All right. All right, so components. So vectors can be conveniently expressed by the horizontal and vertical components. So here's a vector u, and here's a vector v. And in the DNA of U is some uh, horizontal part. And then there's also a vertical part to U. So thinking about starting at the tail to the tip, what's the part of that that's just solely horizontal, right? So, so as a displacement from this tail to this tip, what do we have horizontally? You see that? that that's, you really have a change or a variation of negative 1 horizontally, and then at the same time, what's happening vertically? Positive 2. Do you see that? So that's the idea of uh, vector components, that it's like negative 1 horizontally and 2 vertically 
combine those or add them, look, tip to tail right there, tip to tail. If you add a negative one horizontally plus a positive two vertically, the, the overall result, or as the crow flies, is the vector u. So we can represent u then as this negative one comma two. So for vectors then we're gonna use chevrons, not parentheses. Parentheses will be like locations, coordinates. The chevrons will be for representing vectors. Are these coordinates, negative one, two? Yeah, where's negative one? Negative one, two is this point right here. It has nothing to do with that vector, you see that? All right, so how could you talk, so we kind of touched on it. So these, these vector components are, they're not about location, but how much change you have from the tail to the tip in the x direction horizontally and in the y direction vertically. That's super important. So vector components really are amounts of variation from the tail to the tip in the, broken down into the horizontal variation and vertical variation. Okay, so what about V? What are the components of V? Well, I gave you the first one. So the vert and then what about the horizontal the vertical component? Negative two. So that we could write that as four or negative two. Again, four or negative two, they're not coordinates, they're not re relative to location, but like amount of variation from the tip, tail to the tip. Okay, another way to represent uh, components is what's called with a unit basis vector. So I just made a vector right there. And that's a special vector called I. What vector is it? What would the components of that be? He wants one zero, agree with that? Yep, that's the vector one zero. And then J is this one. What's the vector, what's that? Zero one. And so basically any vector can be written as a linear combination of these two. So for instance, how can I write u, this vector u, in terms of i and j? How many i's do I have? Negative one i, do you see that? And then how many j's do I have? Positive two j's, right? So I could, I could write it this way. I could write that, unit, that vector u as negative one of i plus two of j. And that would give me <coughs> those components. Similarly, with the V, how can you write V? 4i minus 2j. So it's like if I were to add together 4i's, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 4i's. Four and then 2j's, or sorry, minus 2j's, right? So a minus j and another minus j. The sum of those six vectors would be the same as vector v, right? So that's 4i minus 2j. I'm going to put you to work real soon here. Question, please. Yeah, because those, those i's and j's are vectors, right? That i stands for the, the unit vector in the <coughs> positive x direction. Yep, so you'll need those arrows. They have to be lowercase or they be up? They should be lower. All right, so now I just moved u. I didn't change it though, it's still negative one, two. I just moved its tail to the tip of v. And so then if I were, that vector would be v plus u, right? Because I've got uh, the tip of v, the tail of u. So this is the result if you put these two in succession, right? If you do v first and then u, the result is that. So here's the beauty of components. When you have vectors and components, uh, okay, so remember in that we talked about how the magnitude of A plus the magnitude of B does not equal to A plus B, right? A plus B is less than, the magnitude of A plus B is less than the sum of those two magnitudes. So you can't just add those together. But when you do components, 
and you're resolving everything in the x direction, well, now you've got apples to apples in the x direction, and then you've got oranges to oranges in the y direction. So those you can add together, right? You can, so we can add the components together because the directions are all the same. So to get v plus u, we can simply do what? 4i minus 2j plus 2j minus 1. Yeah, so, and then how, so what happens then? So then I can just 4 negative 1, or apples to apples, because they're both horizontal directions. See that? And then negative 2 and 2 are oranges to oranges, because they're both in the vertical direction. So it's OK to add those, because they have the same direction. And that gives 3, 0. Right? So 4 plus negative 1 is 3, and minus 2 plus 2 is 0. And then does the visual representation uh, agree with that 3, 0? Yeah, because the, the resulting vector is just all in the x direction, magnitude of 3, no, no change on the y. So this is the, this is the real convenient thing about uh, having them in component form, is that you can just add, add x components, add y components. Right? 3, 0 is also 3i. And you don't have to write, you could write 0j plus 0j, but you don't need to. So because plus zero j is zero. All right, so now I want you to, this is, I, we haven't done this, but I'm gonna have you figure it out. Pretend you've never done vectors before, and your task is find the magnitude of v. The magnitude of v, which is what? Represented by the length of that vector. So you're gonna work at your table. Find the magnitude of v and the magnitude of u I have not told you how to do this, but you're going to draw on your past experience. Notation. There are actually two notations. You can, um, they can, you can do just single bars. I think our book has double bars, and they mean exactly the same thing. So if you see single bar, single bars around a, a vector or double bars. It means the same thing. It means we don't care about direction anymore. We just want to know the amount the magnitude, or in this case, the length of those vectors. Okay, so u, length of the vector u. So let's see, somebody, tell me your name right here again. Kaden. Okay. Kaden. What'd you think about, how would we find vector u? And how does, how does the Pythagorean theorem apply in this case? Like, yeah, so tell me what the triangle is like. So where, where, so I'm just looking at vector u, and how am I going to make a triangle out of that? Okay. So I think are you seeing, imagining this here? What is that? How much? Two. And then. Is this what some of you are imagining? Yeah, so the, the vector components, they make, they're like the legs of the right triangle where then the vector is the hypotenuse. That was the idea. <coughs> okay, and so then, square root of? One squared plus two squared, or negative, so, square root of five. Okay, V? Is that 2 root 5? Square root of 20, 2 root 5. <clears throat> okay, and then what about v plus u? We're going to do the square root. Some of the squares, square root. So if you do that, it's kind of like your brain isn't on. It's kind of like you turned your brain off. What's the magnitude of v plus u? Three. How do you know it's 3? It's all in the horizontal direction. The whole vector is horizontal, and so it's the horizontal component, right? So it has a magnitude of three because it's all three to the right. So don't use the formula. So be be on the lookout for you know just a quick and quick and simple solution. Oh hey, that's just three because it's the x component is all three and nothing up and down. So it's just three. Okay, so. 
does the square root of 5, this one, this is the square root of 5 length, this length is 2 square root of 5. Does 5 plus 2 to the square root of 5 equal 3? Right, because this is this is vector, this is v plus u. So is this magnitude the same as the sum of these? No, why not? What's messing it up? Direction, right? So when you when you when v and u aren't pointing in the same direction, the magnitude of the sum of those two is going to be just it's going to be something different. It's not going to be the sum of those magnitudes. It's much less, right? So if I took the magnitude another square root of five this way, that'd be three square root of five, right? That's three square root of five, or the sum of those two, magnitude of v and u. Totally different than the magnitude of true the true magnitude of v, v plus u. So direction messes up it messes up the the values of the quantities, right? It messes up the magnitudes or the arithmetic. It messes up just plain arithmetic. Okay. Questions on that? All right. So now we're gonna practice some uh, practice subtraction. So you're going to find sketch sketch v minus u as uh, tail to tail, right? So sketch sketch v minus u and tail to tail. Find the vector, find the components of v minus u, and then find the magnitude of v minus u. So I want you to make a sketch of v minus u with those vectors. Now you have this one. Take it from the and then you have a line Okay. So, as one possibility, you could take U and you can move U. And if I want to move U so that they're tail to tail, where is it going to be? So, you know, it's going to still have negative one to the right and two up. So where is it going to end up? I'm going to put it down here. Here. These are all vector u. All of these are vector u. The last one, right? So now they're tail to tail. There it is. So that's, that's drawing u up here so that they're tail to tail. Okay. I don't know this. There we go. All right. And then what is that? It is negative one, two. And now if I'm going to do V minus U, again, components, having a component form is super convenient because I can just subtract components because components are apples to apples, oranges to oranges. So V minus U will be, the X component of V minus U will be, 4 minus negative 1. And then the y component? Negative 2 minus 2. And that is? And so 5 negative 4 is going to be, this is going to be ugly, but I'll do my best. Here we go, ready? I've got three, I have three chances. Oh. Uh. Where were we? There we go. Okay. So we'll just stick with this one. So now, five, negative four. Does that point down into the right or up into the left? Down into the right, because down into the right would mean to the right, five, and down four. To the right, five, down four. That's supposed to be straight. So does that clear it up? I know it's a, that this is this the subtraction thing is kind of dicey. I know that. So does it clear it up, or do you guys, anybody have a question? And if you added, the, if you took the opposite of u and added it, 
tip to tail, you should have gotten the same vector 5 minus 4. Some of you did that. You took u and you flipped it, flipped its direction, and then you put it now, then you put its tail on the tip of v, you get the same vector. So that would be like this. The opposite of v would be like this. Right? So this is, the, or sorry, the opposite of u, sorry. So then v plus the opposite of u would give you this vector. And it's the same one as the orange one I drew, 5, negative 4. Okay, please ask, or if you have comments, I know this is, yes, please. So what would we label that new vector then, v minus u then? Or? Yeah, it's, uh, it's be v minus u or 5 minus 4, right? It's just, so we can, or we can name it something new. We can call it w. If we defined, say, w as v minus u, then we could call that new vector w. Or you could write v minus u, or you could write 5 minus 4. Those are all equivalent. Questions about vector subtraction? hope that helps a little bit. Oh, we had to find the magnitude. Magnitude is? Yeah. So we imagine a right triangle with leg 5 and leg 4. So the magnitude is? <coughs> Square root of 41? Yeah. Which is equivalent to the length of that vector. As so yeah, 5 squared and 4 squared. OK, other questions? All right, so one more problem here. Find and sketch. So let's talk about this. We're going to, uh, what would it mean to take one fourth of v? One fourth of v. How would that compare to vector v? You're going to scale the length down by, a, by one fourth. Right, exactly. So, and so, and then how would you do the math? What would you do if you wanted one fourth of v? Divide one fourth of more. Take one fourth of each component, right? So you can take one, one fourth of each component, and the result is a vector that's scaled. What about the direction of the new vector? Same direction. And its length is now? One fourth of, so that would be something like one fourth of V. And it equals? One negative a half. So this is why we call it scalar multiplication, because you're scaling the vector, either stretching it or shrinking it by a scalar. And in this case, one fourth. Then 2u, what would the meaning of 2u be? And so how would that vector compare to vector u? Negative 2, 4, so it's in the same direction as u, and? Twice the magnitudes. Do that. And I'm going to do its tip of 2u on the tail of 1 fourth v. I'm going to do 1 fourth v plus 2u. I'm going to take the tip of 2u. So there's 1u, and then there's 2u, something like that. And what does 2u equal? <coughs> and then the resultant vector. Getting out all the colors today. Resultant vector then would be as the crow flies from the start of 1 fourth v to the end of 2u. And so then we'd have that whole result would be negative one, three and a half. So adding a quarter of v, so that's a vector that's one quarter of the length of v plus two u, so double, double u, tip to tail. Add the components, negative two plus one, four plus negative a half. Any questions on that? Okay, so uh, we've talked about both these. Let's summarize it here. So a unit vector 
has a magnitude of 1. That can be in any direction. Okay, that can be in any direction. So just saying it's a unit vector does not qualify what direction it is. But if you say a unit vector, that's specifically a vector with magnitude 1. Okay? The standard basic unit vectors, the ones we saw were i and j. And then when we get into R3, you have another, another axis, another coordinate. So you have i, j, and k. So how many components do R3 vectors have? How many components? Will they have three. three for three dimensions, right? So once you write so uh, write i j in R two, what would those vectors be in component form? And i j and k, what would those be in component form for R three uh, coordinate system? Tell me your name again, Black Sweatshirt, yeah. Josh. Josh, tell me what are I and J again, what are those? In, uh, com in component form? Oh, uh, I is uh, one, one comma zero. One comma zero. And J is zero comma one. Zero comma one. All right, and so then, how about here in the blue shirt? Tell me your name again. Yeah. Who is it? Ryan. Ryan, how about the R3 vectors, what would those be? Okay. Right, and? You hear that? So, 1, 0, 0 is I, 0, 1, 0 is J, 0, 0, 1 would be K. Those would be your unit vectors, standard basis. We can write all other vectors as linear combinations of those in whatever system you're in. Okay, we already answered this question, but let's just say it again. So, do you remember, what is the effect of multiplying a vector by a scalar? What's the new vector that you get? How does it compare to the old one? Tell me your name. Okay, was it Helena? Helena? How does the new vector that you get compare to the old one when you multiply a vector by a scalar? Uh, so maybe if I gave you an example, if, if we had the vector, uh, say, C, and you did the vector 3C, what would that? Be? Right, so that would increase the size of C by 3. What about the direction? Direction stays the same. So do you always get a vector in the same direction when you multiply by a scalar? Yes. Okay, so your name again? Chris. Chris says no. Why not? Because if it's a negative 3, then it's in the opposite direction. It'll point, it'll go the opposite direction, right? So. We can always say that you get a vector that's parallel. It's always parallel. But if it's the scalar is negative, you're gonna, the vector is going to point in exactly the opposite direction. Okay? If, this, if the scalar is positive, it will point in the same direction as the original vector. Okay? So you have two things going. When you have a negative scalar, you have two things going on. You have a, a scaling effect, but then it flipped, the direction is flipped as well. Okay, we already, we already really answered those questions. We already answered those questions. Okay, so now, how, given this idea of scalar multiplication, I can scale a vector to any length that I want. How would I, I've got this vector 3 minus 5, right, or 3i minus 5j. How could I write that in component form? What's that the same as? Uh-huh. Yep. So you could start by writing. That's good. 3, 0, minus 0, 5. And then if I did the math? 3, 3 negative 5, right? So yeah. So these are mathematically the same. This is not just a different way to label it. Mathematically, they're the same because this is the vector 1, 0. This is the vector 0, 1. So when you do the math on this, you get 3 minus 5. Do you see that? This isn't just like a different way of labeling it. This is truly, these are truly mathematically equal. So now I want to find a unit vector in that direction. Is that longer or shorter than the unit vector? Certainly longer. What is that? Square root of 24, right? Square, the length of that square root of 24. 
So if the length of that is square root of 24, I want to get a vector in the same direction as that, but has a magnitude of 1. How would I scale it? If the magnitude of that is radical 24, then how would I scale that so that the result has magnitude 1? Yeah, so you would take like 1 radical 24th of it, right? We want 1 radical 24th of it. So to get the unit vector in that direction, we could take the 3 minus 5 and we could scale it by 1 over its magnitude. And the resulting vector would be 3 over radical 24 and Where is the Did I do the math right? So what is the magnitude of this? 34, thank you. I'm not very good at math, you guys. <laughs> yes, 34. So it should it should make sense. This isn't something like you said, be all memorization, but it really should make sense that okay, if the magnitude is radical three, thirty four, and I want to get it to be length one, then I'm going to multiply by one radical thirty fourth of that, scale it that much, and it'll shrink it down to magnitude one. Okay, so then taking that a step further. Here's a nice little problem. We'll see this variations of this, lots of variations of this problem here, this next one. So now I have a vector. I want a vector with magnitude 8. And let's, let's change this up. Let's do something new here. How about in the direction of negative 2i plus 6j. So I want a vector, so you've got a little bit to figure out here. But if I want to get a vector with magnitude 8 in the opposite direction of the vector negative 2i plus 6j. You've got all the tools. I, I haven't shown you how to do one of these, a little problem solving activity. But you have all the tools to do it. So think about it. If you need help, then you can get help from me or someone next to you. Okay, so let's see. How about in the middle table? Did you get it? Tell me your name again. Name's Kelly. Kelly. Can you explain explain your thinking in this problem? So two different ways of expressing the exact same vector. Mathematically equivalent. You can do the math. There's like three steps you can do on this. Do the math, and you'll get exactly this. That's a good little exercise um, to, to practice. OK? Then what? Yeah. OK? Uh-huh. And what'd you get? Okay. <laughs> What's your name in the black shirt? Yeah. Yeah. Um, what, Lucas. Lucas. And so what I did is I found the magnitude of the line, which was square root of four. Right. And then I inverse the 
reverse it to make the magnitude of the one, the original line one, and then I multiplied it by eight. Okay, so you. So the first thing you did again was what? So I inverse. Uh, so so you you scale the original vector yeah, scale by how much? How much did you scale it by? Uh, by uh, a one over the square root of forty. And what in effect did that do? What did you get for that? And then I got the magnitude of one. So so this is called what kind of vector then? So you make we're making the first make it into a unit vector. Yep. Okay. And then I multiply that by negative eight. And then if you scale it by negative eight, that'll make it'll scale it eight times as much as this and flip the direction. And if we put it all together, what do we get here? And there's probably a cancellation there, but that's very trivial. Okay, and then? Nice. Does that make sense? Right? So if you want it to have magnitude 8, what you want is a unit vector. You want a unit vector that you can just multiply by 8. In this case, minus 8, because you want to flip the direction also. But with that unit vector of magnitude 1, then all you have to do is scale it by the resulting magnitude that you want. Ah. What is the unit vector again? I'm so confused. Any vector that has length 1, magnitude 1. So if you scaled it, if you multiply it by a scalar, then the resulting vector will be the value of that scalar. Does that help? Yeah. So this, this is a unit vector in the same direction as the original vector. So it has a magnitude of 1. And then by multiplying by 8, it scales it by 8. And then the minus flips the direction. Does that help? Yeah. Cool. Other questions? All right. So let's talk about initial and terminal points. So sometimes... So say my point P is 3, 1. And point Q is, that's not 3, 1. I told you I was bad at math. 1, 3. And let's say, and then Q is, I shouldn't do that to myself. Just asking for it. Uh, Q is 2.52. So do you see that any two points in the plane will uniquely determine how many vectors? How many vectors could I get out of those two points? Two, two right? So I could do, I could have the tail be at P and the tip at Q. All right, that's the best vector I've drawn all day, right there. And so that vector that I drew is, you can write this way, PQ with an arrow over it, meaning the tail is at P and the tip is at Q. And so let's, can you find the components? Okay, I heard 1.5, negative 1. Do you agree with that? What did the meaning, what was the meaning of the components again? How much variation? So how much variation in x do you have? Positive 1.5. And where did that, if we were just doing pure math, just pure arithmetic, where would that 1.5 come from? Final minus initial, right? Final minus initial. And then the y component of our pq is how much variation horizontally, which is negative 1, which comes from? 2 minus 3. Okay, and then we could also write the vector. What vector is that? QP. Tail at Q, tip at P. 
And then we've already done the, the heavy lifting. We can just write it down. QP will be? <coughs> It'll be equal and opposite, right? It's the same, same vector, just in the opposite direction. So you can just flip the signs of your components. OK, so one thing we haven't mentioned is um, vectors can be placed in what's called standard position, or position vectors. Is where you take any vector and you put its tail at the origin. So I want to put, I want the, I want to show QP as a posi position vector. QP. QP as a position vector would look like what? Where would that? Which, what, which quadrant would that point into? One, two, three, or four. Into two. So you're saying two because QP is the blue. Yeah, so one, two, three, four. So it's going to point. QP is negative one and a half and one. So it's going to be like this. So this is still vector QP, even though we've. The points Q and P have not moved. But that's still, when we talk about the vector QP, all we care about is the components, the variations, not location, right? So that is QP, but placed in standard form. Sorry. Uh, position. Standard position, thank you. Placed in standard position. And so then what happens when you place it in standard position? Something special happens. What's that? Right. The components, the, the coordinates of the tip are the same as the components. So, so the coordinates of the tip now are 1.51. 1. Because the variation from the origin, the variation from 0, takes you to the, the place, right? So negative 1.51 will take you to the point, negative 1.51 from the origin. So that's so when the tail's at 0, 0, the, the values of the coordinates of your tip and the components are the same. So when, when the tail's at the tip, then it becomes x, y, y coordinates? Uh, so the components of the vector are the same as the coordinates of the tip. Does that make sense? All right, so let's switch it up here. Let's do something different than displacement vectors. So th this is now using force vectors. But we can, we can put those force vectors in the plane as if they were displacement vectors, OK? So it's kind of like, it's kind of like we're uh, layering it, right? So it's like we're working with these as position vectors. But we're really, the whole focus of this is what's happening. All this, this picture is not about points out here. The whole picture is about what's happening right there at the origin, that there's pulling on the origin. Okay? So this is kind of a mesh or a meld of using displacement vectors to model just what's happening at that one point, the forces at that origin. Okay? So forces A and B are applied to origin. <coughs> So what's, what I'm giving here, here is what's called polar representation of the vectors. Polar, which is magnitude and direction as an angle. So the 4K, 4 kilonewtons and 40 degrees, that's called a polar representation of the vector, which goes back to kind of the concept of a vector, right? We said at the very beginning, we said, what are vectors? They have direction and magnitude. So the polar representation is kind of the more literal uh, representation in terms of that, in terms of direction and magnitude. And then we talked about com components. So uh, you're going to find the component representation of each vector. Again, you have to pull from your toolbox of previous courses. How are we going to get? Once again, putting you in the problem-solving si problem situation. 
how are you going to get the components of A? And then do that for both A and B. Get the components. And then once you have the components, it's kind of easy to resolve how much force is actually being applied at the origin due to these two forces. So what's the overall force being applied at the origin due to these two forces? So to do that, the first thing you need is the component representations of both A and B. I'm going to let you clear out the cobwebs of pre-calculus. Should have had some of this in calculus also. Go. So if you need help, so you're either making progress or you're getting help. You're either making progress or getting help. So first we need the components of, tell me your name in the blue shirt, yeah, yeah, tell me your name. Philip, okay, so how about getting the components of A, how'd you do that? How did we do that? Um, so we just took, uh, so we just did uh, four corresponding components. Uh-huh. Okay. What do we think? Agreed? So A could be written as X component. Four cosine 40. I'm going to write out exactly. I'm going to keep them exact. And four sine 40. And now I'll write an approximation. That's about what? Nice and long. 3.06. Thank you. We have agreement on those? Okay, cool. So that's our vector A in components. Right? So we have the component form and the polar form. Polar is magnitude and some, some way of expressing the direction. And then component form is x component, y component. Similarly, B, we can do the same thing. And you get? So is it 2 cosine 10? 2 cosine 10. Is it 2 cosine 10? Yeah, so you either got to do negative, negative 2 cosine 10, or you could do 2 cosine 170. Because you want that x component to be negative because it's pointing to the left. So I'll just do negative 2 cosine 10, but 2 cosine 170 would get it too. Make sense? And then? 2 sine 10? That's okay because the sine, whether it's 10 or 170, is the same. They're both positive. So we can do 2 sine 10. That's fine. And approximations for that? Yeah. 1.96. 1.96? Not 1.96. Negative. 1.96. And? 3, 4? 3, 5. So then, so, so we've got those forces as components. So what will happen in the x direction? If I'm pulling 3.06 to the right, but I'm pulling negative 1.96 to the left, what do I do to get the resultant horizontal force there? Yeah, just add them, right? So I'm just going to add the 3.06 to the right and the negative 1.96 to the left. Gives a combined effect of? 1.0 positive or negative positive. positive there's more positive force right so this this there's somewhat of a canceling effect the resultant is 1.1 to the right okay then what's are we gonna have a canceling effect in the y direction no it's gonna be a, like a combined effect right both are pulling up so we're going to get, add those together. You good? 2.92. All right, so let me draw that. Let's get pretty orange here. So let's see, 1.1 and 2.92. It's going to look something like so 1.1, 2.92, maybe something like this. 
So if I drew that, so the resultant of those two blue vectors, like it's the same as, as this one orange vector pulling with 1.1 comma 2.92. That's the combined effect of the two blue vectors. And then visually, does that make sense as vector addition? How do we do vector addition visually? What do we do? Yep, so I can move B, so its tail is at the tip of A. And does it work? Yes. It works. So I eyeballed this based on the 1.1, 2.92, but then when I throw B, A plus B, it, has, it lands me at the same place. Okay, now how do I get, now I want to take this resultant vector, the 1.1, 2.92 kilonewtons, and I, want to, and I should have the units there. If you were thinking where, where I doesn't have his units, that's good. Should have. So now I want to get the polar form. So how do I get the, how many kilonewtons in that direction, right? How many kilonewtons in the direction of the resultant direction? How would I get that? Magnitude. Right, the magnitude of that vector. The magnitude of that vector. So it would be square root of. Anybody have that? That's kilonewtons. And then, so now I want angle. How do I get angle from the x and y components? How do I get angle? The x component, what, is this down here? Green. So the x component. If I have the x component of 1.1 and the y component of 2.92, those are the best legs of a triangle I've done all day. How do, these are little victories for me. All right, how do I, so how am I gonna get the angle, that orange angle, that's how far it's swept up from positive x-axis, if I have those two green lengths? Yeah, we got to do some kind of inverse inverse trig function, right? I've got all three legs of this triangle. I've got the 3.12, I've got the 1.1, I've got 2.92. Take your pick, right? So if we want to make sure we're not using an incorrect hypotenuse, we'll go back to our components. We would use arc opposite over adjacent. Arc tan of... 2.92 over 1.1. And that would give, and then set your calculator to degrees. Anyone got it? Something, it's going to be greater than 40, right? But less than 90? Something between 40 and 90. Does someone else get 61? 69? 69. 69 degrees. And uh, 3.12 is the polar form, 3.12 kilonewtons. Doesn't make sense. Any questions? Yes, please. Uh, I'm sorry? Oh, the order that you put them in? No, it doesn't really. That's, yeah, I probably should have put the magnitude first, but it doesn't. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> Other questions? Okay, so let me. I'm gonna uh, let me just talk about the homework, and then I'm gonna give you some some more practice discussion to think about before we leave. So I'm telling you about the homework, but. Um, we're not ending class, okay? <clears throat> Any questions on this example? Any more questions? Okay, so here's what we'll do. From 13.1, I want you to do two through, a lot of these are short problems, okay? But this is a five hour class, so um, there's gonna be a lot of work to do. So from 13.1 in the exercises, I want you to do two through 46 even. And then 13.2, I want you to do 6 through 10, all of them. 
and then 11, 13, 15, and 16. If you're needing some immediate feedback, then, then work on an odd one that's close by and check your answer in the back. That can help, right? If you're, if you're on an even one and you're kind of not sure if you're doing it right, then just do a similar odd problem. Check your answer in the back and that'll help you see if you're, if you're doing it right. And what we'll do is um, we're, we're gonna, we'll have a quiz at the beginning of class and the quiz will be some of these problems. I'm guaranteeing the quiz will come from this list. Okay, is that fair? And that'll also be your homework. So then once we get Canvas up, you'll PDF, you'll write all these solutions, you'll PDF it, and you'll submit it on Canvas. But then the quiz that we have, and so then when I check over it, it'll be more for completion. And then to make sure they're actually doing it accurately, we'll take the quiz, which will be maybe two to four or five of these, these questions will be the quiz. Next class. Yeah, so this will be due. Uh, well, it'll actually do whenever I get Canvas up, which I don't know if I'll have it up by Thursday or not. But the, the key is you want to do it before class because your quiz will be questions from these, these problems. Another question, yeah? Um, you said on Canvas when you come in, you just have an answer. No, so full work solutions. Yeah, no. Whenever you submit homework, you're always showing all your work. Always show all your work. Because if you just write down answers, I have no idea where those came from. So always show all your work. Good. Formal solutions. Yes, sir. So, do you want us to wait to give you like a hard copy when you get Canvas up? So you can you're never going to give me a hard copy, <coughs> but you're going to have it. So, you'll have it and you'll make a PDF and you'll submit it on Canvas and I'll just look it on the computer. Yeah, so, I mean, in general, it'll be due before the next class period. Sure. Okay. But I don't know if that's possible if Canvas will be ready by then. Okay. But you'll still should have it done by the next class period because you're going to have your quiz. Yeah. We're waiting on everything. I just got the job. So we're just doing some math and then we'll get the logistics done later. All right, so I got some more, some good practice problems here for discussion. Let's see if this works. I don't know how this works. Let's see here. Maybe the middle button. On. Oh, here we go. On, maybe. Yeah. 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 You're going to hold it on to We have more quizzes. Okay, so. How do I zoom in? This way? How do I zoom in? Mm, maybe move it down. Oh, you froze the camera. How do I under freeze it? Does it freeze? Now, how do I zoom in? There we go. Yeah, no, it's the same. It's the same picture. 